Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our lecture on 1.19, Voting in Elections. You already have several PowerPoints available for you in D2L, especially the PowerPoint that has a red background will be useful for your studies. Uh, that background uh, PowerPoint overviews um, the 13th Amendment, the 19th Amendment, and the 26th Amendment, and the Voting Rights Act of 1965, as well as some other important topics. So just uh, review that, uh, and we've talked about it in class already, and we'll talk about it again. So when we come to looking at voting and elections in America, two differentiations must be made between types of campaigns. Presidential campaigns on one hand, and congressional campaigns on the other. They're two very different, but they're two very important campaign cycles. First of all, as we talked about with political parties, you have to be nominated for both. You have to get your name on the ballot. Uh, you have to register. You have to be, have been a registered voter. You have to have some familiarity, uh, even if you're relatively new to a community and running for Congress. With, with the presidency, of course, it's very, very different. Uh, Parties played less a role than they once did. Parties nominated most people who ran for office many years ago. Uh, over time, it has evolved, which really campaigning in terms of getting the party's nomination so that you can run against the other party's nominee is largely a personal uh, effort. I mean, it's not so much dependent on the political party. There are major differences between a presidential campaign and a congressional campaign. Presidential races are always more competitive, more expensive, and longer. Um, many times, people run for Congress, especially in the House of Representatives, where about 90% are re-elected every two years without uh, opposition, is uh, the House, you don't have that same kind of, uh, same kind of requirement. Also, um, it's very important to have been a member of a political party, typically, especially for the presidency, less so for the House and the Senate, although you should have some familiarity, some membership, some role in that. Uh, of course, we have four-year presidential terms. Uh, every two years, however, members of the House of Representatives are up for election. And those all-year elections is what we call for those elections. Uh, typically, voter turnout is much lower than it is on presidential elections, which is usually over uh, 50%. Uh, congressional candidates also, in the process of nomination and running for office, can kind of duck responsibility. Uh, they can say, oh, well, you know, that was done in the past. I have these new ideas. That's what the president did. Uh, the president, however, presidential candidates can't duck responsibility, especially if their party engaged in certain activities, certain uh, took certain actions that some people don't like. That's the that's the real world. Also, we used to have something called presidential coattails. What that means is if you had a very popular presidential candidate, um, that people running on uh, on that same ticket for the House or Senate could be helped by folks who are going to vote for the president. Oh, I'm going to vote for a Democratic president. I'm also going to vote for a Democratic congressman. Uh, or, hey, I'm voting for a Republican uh, president. He's very popular or she is very popular. Oh, I'm also going to vote for a Republican senator. So the coattails, that's less the case anymore, although you do see uh, signs of it. Uh, there are often alleged cases of a red wave or potentially a blue wave, red wave being Republican, blue wave, uh, wave being a Democratic uh, landslide or Democratic majority or Republican majority in any particular off year election, that is less likely to happen. Okay, let's talk about what's required to run for president in America. Please look at the textbook of this chapter. It'll be very helpful. But basically, you have to be known. You have to be a known con commodity. You have to be mentioned. You have to work with reporters. You have to give speeches. You have to build your campaign over time. And you also have to typically been successful in um, writing legislation, promoting ideas, doing things to help the government uh, achieve certain things over time. That's not always the case. For example, uh, we have also elected presidents on occasion. Uh, Donald J. Trump is an example who had no experience in government whatsoever. Uh, so 
uh, that is perhaps less and less the case. You also have to set aside time to run. Uh, Ronald Reagan, for example, had run once before and then spent four years, a total of six years, preparing to run in 1980. Um, uh, you may have to leave whatever office you're in based upon your state's laws to run for president. So you may have to resign from whatever office you're in. For example, it's, um, most political scientists would agree that President Obama spent a number of years, his years in the Senate, his four years in the Senate, uh, preparing to run uh, for president. And so he knew he had a plan very early on. And really, you have to have a plan. Um, uh, so that's, that's very helpful to any president to be able to spend that time to prepare and be engaged. It's something you can't start uh, quickly uh, and typically be very successful. You also have to have an organization if you run for president. You have to have a large staff to carry out all the functions it requires to run for president. You need volunteers. You need to be have people who support your campaign in every state who will help you out. And you can see candidates who don't have that kind of support. They tend to kind of fade away uh, over time. Uh, and you need advisors, people serious, academic types, uh, uh, business leaders who can help you form ideas about politics and government. Okay, let's talk a little bit about strategy for running for president. Um, are you the incumbent, the person already in office? Are you the person running against the incumbent? You have to decide pretty early on your strategy of defending your policies, which typically the incumbent does, defending the policies. They're already in office, already made decisions, already known for certain actions. Or do you criticize or attack? If you're the uh, person who is not the incumbent, that's typically your, your strategy. You want to set the tone of your campaign. In the past, um, Political scientists thought positive campaigns were generally more successful, although uh, that's no longer the case in the sense that negative campaigning, negative campaigns uh, tend to be successful uh, as well. So we that research is being rethought, <laughs> uh, uh, reconsidered. And then uh, one basic decision you have to make is kind of jumping in the political ring. Uh, hey, I'm going to run. It's official. You dedicate all your energy, everything you have uh, to running. Now, that's the president. Let's turn to Congress. In Congress, uh, you have to know the congressional district that you are running from, or running for, excuse me, uh, would be more appropriate. Uh, does, do you, can you fit into that district? Are you uh, someone who shares the values of those people in that district? Um, and uh, there are 435 House districts, uh, all different. So can the candidate successfully campaign and work in that district? Uh, you have to win a primary. You have to run that, in that process that we talked about with political parties of recruiting, nominating, and then uh, running uh, a successful campaign. You have to win the primary. And typically, in the primary, the sort of nomination process um, you run a different campaign than you do in the main election. So that's an important point for us, both in presidential elections and congressional elections. You have to win the party's uh, nomination uh, against other fellow members of your party. And then you face, in the general election, the representative of uh, the other political party. And the winner of the general election is the person who takes the office. Uh, so keep, keep that in mind. So, uh, the primary versus the general elections are different. Um, different workers, different voters, different campaigns. And the textbook uh, gives us some survey of that. Um, you also have to get the word out about your campaign in both the primary and general um, and using all the available um, resources the paid advertising, which is a key point, uh, doesn't necessarily determine the outcome, but it gets your name out, especially if you're in the House or in the Senate uh, a, a campaign and you're not that well known. Um, try to get on news broadcasts, which with both cable and uh, broadcast television is very important. Options are literally unlimited. And you try to debate your colleague. 
uh, uh, your opponent in the election and uh, try to use that debate to uh, express your ideas and how you're the superior candidate and why people should vote for you. Um, you also have to be prepared that if, if you make mistakes, you may say the wrong thing. Uh, uh, you may um, have a mishap, whether it's in the presidential campaign or uh, a congressional a campaign, how are you going to respond? Um, also, the Internet since 2004 has been a factor in elections, uh, both good and bad in terms of allowing candidates to get their message out. Most use uh, the Internet extensively. But there's, there's certainly the possibility and sadly the reality that social media uh, misrepresents candidates and campaigns. And so you have to also respond to that. Another factor in both presidential and congressional campaigns is money. Money is the mother's milk of politics, as I've said many times in class. Um, presidential candidates and congressional candidates spend tremendous amounts of money on uh, their uh, campaigns. For example, it cost about a million bucks to run for the House. Uh, in the last few cycles, sometimes even higher, depending on the congressional seat, how competitive it is, how much national influence comes into play in those sites. Um, a source of campaign money uh, for the presidency, uh, uniquely, it has a federal matching uh, fund system, uh, but it only matches small donors, uh, typically less than $250, um, and then higher in some states. Um, so you have to be able to raise a, a significant amount of money from small donor, donors to prove your viability as a candidate. Uh, and um, but in congressional campaigns, um, you get this you get your money basically from individuals, uh, the political party and the political action committees that we've talked about. Most money comes from small donors, one hundred to two hundred dollars a person. About a thousand dollars is the maximum for an individual donor, but there are many ways to give money to a campaign, so that's not completely accurate. Same way with political action committees, that amount is about five thousand uh, dollars. Many times, uh, PACs, political action committees, will give less money than that. Uh, what we've had over uh, the last forty years is fairly dramatic change in terms of campaign finance laws. Uh, this is a result of incidents that have happened in American public life. Watergate uh, in, uh, was, a, was a kind of a strange money-raising scheme in part. Also, was a, a break-in and resulted in the resignation of Richard Milhouse Nixon. Um, the laws then became reformed, set in, limits on individual donations of $1,000. Uh, it's going to impact the law and impact the way campaigns are run. Uh, we even have, uh, uh, but uh, money can come on behalf of campaigns outside of gifts to individual candidates. And they, remarkably, are relatively unlimited. And this is where the controversy comes in, in terms of donations to political campaigns. Um, political scientists generally agree, and this is not complex, the more money you have, the more likely you are to win. Uh, especially during peacetime when there's no conflict and when, when in that case the person already in office in a conflict or national uh, disastrous uh, occasion, uh, that person tends to get reelected. Money makes a big difference in presidential races and congressional races, especially for keeping incumbents, that's people who are already in office, keeping them in power. Well, uh, we've also talked how people vote. Uh, who decides elections? Uh, why don't the Democrats always win? Well, we've talked about how some Demo Democrats are less loyal to their party than the Republicans and tend to shift in some votes. Uh, Republicans usually have a higher turnout, even and when they're the minority, that makes a big difference. Um, we've talked about campaigns a little bit already. Campaigns do make a difference. You can appeal to your party. The party is loyal members, peer to people who agree with you on certain issues. Um, typically, uh, if you appeal to themes over details, you're likely to be more successful. This has been true throughout American politics. Um, and so having a campaign that can convince people of the spirit of your campaign 
the big ideas versus the specifics. Um, and that's true really in any kind of any political campaign. You have to find a voting, uh, a winning voting coalition, a group of people who will support you. Uh, and sometimes groups themselves are complicated. Uh, we know, for example, the typical Democratic coalition, the most loyal group, is made of African Americans. Uh, people, people of the Jewish faith tend to vote Democratic, but that is starting to change to some degree. Hispanics are, are kind of equally divided between Republican and Democratic sympathies. Um, the typical coalition of the Democrats throughout second half of the 20th century and most of the 20th century coming into the 21st century with Catholics, Southerners, and uh, others. Uh, but these groups are falling apart. Catholics are almost equally divided in the 21st century between voting for Republicans and Democrats. Uh, same way with Southerners. There's Southern, South, of course, tends to be more conservative, but uh, still, if you look at a state like our Georgia, you see that uh, uh, Georgia can elect Democratic uh, senators but then, uh, and support a Democratic president uh, as well. Uh, even though it's assumed uh, that uh, Georgia is, or and and the, many other states in the South are purely red. Um, so uh, elections are central. Aler elections are vital to American politics. And that's why we spend so much time looking at voting in elections. And really, we'll keep talking about voting in elections as we continue to look at Congress, as we continue to look at the presidency, and we continue to look at the future of American politics. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.